I want to take your attention to uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. And then we'll jump over to 1 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse 18 through 19. If you don't have a Bible, there's go they're going to put it on the screen. If you don't know where Timothy is, he's, he's going to put it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Prophetess Barbara Calloway, we honor you. We thank you. Yes. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. And it reads, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. This is Paul writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. Paul has established the church in Ephesus. He left Ephesus, but he's writing to his son, Timothy, to encourage him. To remind him of some things. So I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. As my forefathers did, as without ceasing, I remember you. In my prayers night and day greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears oh, isn't it wonderful when someone else is reminded of your tears that when somebody cares about what you're going through he says that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded it is in you also. Somebody shout, it is in you. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of on hands. For God has not given us the spirit of what? But of what? And of what? And of what? First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 says, Timothy, my son. Here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battle. Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For the, some people have deliberately violated their consciousness or their conscience. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. For the next few moments, I want to speak. Y'all know I have simple titles. I want to speak from three words. I will remember. Father, thank you for this food that we're about to receive. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let me get to it. Uh, beneath the pandemic, let me establish this. Beneath the pandemic, um, Economists, sociologists have discovered that there was a phenomenon happening uh, within the pandemic. There was a lot of things happen going on in our economy as well as real estate in these various areas. But they discovered uh, something and they coined a phrase and they called it the great resignation. And the great resignation, if you have never heard of what the great resignation is, millions of people that have been on jobs, have been in careers for decades, have decided to just simply resign. Some of them had, some of the women, they had children, uh, and so they had to redefine their lives as we tapped into the pandemic. But most of them just said, you know what, this is a season. It wasn't just the fact that some people lost their jobs. Some people did. They lost, you know, uh, uh, they downsized, the company downsized, or they uh, revamped things. But what we discovered now as I researched this thing, that there were several people saying, I have given my life to what I thought made me have meaning but I discovered through this pandemic I discovered that that's really what I wanted to do but I want to discover the purpose that I was designed to do and so many of them just said you know how can you walk away from a career that you went to school for 18 years no just kidding that you went to school for so long to to to, to invest in you've invested into your future you're a top executive why would you quit why would you give up why would you sign this over right now and it's because people are in search of meaning 
People are in search of significance. People are in search of purpose. Do I have anybody uh, under the sound of my voice? Like, I don't want to spin my wheels. I don't want to spend my life investing myself into something and never fe feeling fulfilled. But here's the thing. Your career was never designed to be your purpose. Your pu you bring the purpose to your career. If you don't ever define out who you are in the midst of it, uh, 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 it, only takes, it only takes things to change on you and you forget who you are. What I believe is that this is the season for the re. Do they have that? What do I mean by that? What is your re in this season? Restructure, realign, restore. Restoration, revive, is this a reviving season for you? Is this a restructuring season for you? Is this is a reset? This is a reset season for me. This is a season of restoration for me. This is a season in my own life of reclaiming, of rethinking, of retooling. What, what, what season is this for you? Because everybody is in a re. So what is yours? I want you to think about this, sec this a second. I want to move too fast. I want you to think very deeply about it because there's so many different areas in our lives that God is literally trying to redesign and revamp. And some of y'all, y'all just hard hit it. And you don't, you don't want, you don't, you don't want to change. You don't want to alter anything. You want things to be the same. But God will show up and says, no, 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 no. If I'm going to do more in your life, if you're going to ever get to the place that I'm going, that I have prepared for you, then and guess what? There's some things that I'm going to have to, uh, there's some things that you're going to have to rediscover about yourself. So what is it for you? Is it a reorganizing? Is this a season of renewal for you? Is this a season of a relaunch for you? What, 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 what is it? And you don't be afraid of it. Embrace whatever the re is for you. Don't act like it's not there. Don't act like you don't have to deal with it. Don't act like you don't have to embrace it. In order for you to move forward, you're going to have to clearly know what this season means for you. And what I believe is through this, watch this, through this series that we are in right now, I want you to know that moving forward is not just move, is north, south, east, and west. Moving forward is a multi-dimensional concept. In other words, there are different areas in your life that you're going to have to move forward in. Moving forward for a family could mean you guys need to spend more time together. Re uh, revamping some things. May, may, uh, this season in your life of moving forward may seem, you know what? I really do need to get rid of these people in my life. You know what? I really do need to get rid of these toxic folks in my life. I, I said it before. I done posted about it. I done did. But this is my season to really stand up and be a man or woman of my word. Ooh, the saints quiet in here today. Well, what season is this for you? Here's what I do know. That no matter what your re is, no matter what it is to rediscover, rethink, retool, rekindle, a revamp. Some of y'all couples need to re rekindle. Hey, Valentine's Day is coming up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Somebody shot rekindle. <laughs> Glory. Whew. Thank you, Lord. But no matter what your re is, hear me. No matter what that is for you, none of it is really going to make sense unless you really understand that God has given us a resource that will help us as we move into whatever has been designed or whatever you have created. And this resource is paramount. This, res woo, this resource 
has hinges on your ability to remember. Somebody shout remember. remember. See, Paul is writing to Timothy, his spiritual son. And he is, it is filled, the text is filled with Paul's admiration as he thinks, possibly in jail, but as he thinks, as he remembers in the inner lockings of his mind, his time that he spent with Timothy. I forgot to tell you that today is my father's 71st heavenly birthday. And I want to dedicate this message to him. But Paul and Timothy met in Ephesus. And Timothy's life has been marked by moments that he spent with Paul. They ate together. They dined together. His grandmother Lois spent time with him, and they fed him. And Timothy gave him water to drink. And, and, and Paul showed him what it meant to be a tent maker, how he made tents. Paul, Paul showed him things. He showed him what the church means. He gave him revelation and insight that nobody would have gave, given him before. I, I, I mean, there's times and encouragement and affirmation because we don't hear any mention of Timothy's father. So therefore, there is a place that Paul might have filled in Timothy's life that no other man did. But, but can I tell you something? That Paul changed Timothy's life. There are gifts inside of Timothy that he didn't even know he possessed. There were moments and there were things that he shared with him that encouraged him, that gave him insight, that showed him the way to go. And I mean, they, 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 they spent so much time together. Just like I spent time with my father. Just like there was times of prayer that they began to pray together. And, and, and Paul laid hands on him and said, God's going to use you. God is going to do great things through you. God is going to do something through you. You may not see it, but trust me, in this season, God is going to use your life. Can I tell you that you may not have a Paul and you may not feel like you're Timothy, but God places people in our lives, male or female, to see in things in us that we did not see in ourselves. There are moments that God will place people to give us wisdom, to give us insight, to make ways for us, to favor us, to mentor to us, to show us things, to partner with things. The truth of the matter is Paul didn't just share wisdom with Timothy. He shared his life. Well, Paul, Paul understood a few things. Paul knew that because of the assignment that he had, that eventually he would have to leave Timothy. He knew that eventually, as much time as they spent together building, teaching him leadership, preparing him for the future, preparing him for the things that are here, he knew that his days were numbered and he knew that eventually he would have to say goodbye. I love you, Paul. I don't know where you're going and I don't know the next time that I'll see you because, you know, some of us right now, we have the advantage that we have pictures and that we have videos and we have moments and we have Instagram to, 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 to chronicalize uh, our moments that we have together. But they didn't have that. And now Paul is gone on into his journey, to, into the next leg of his destiny, to the next dimension. And now Paul is outside of Timothy's reach. 
No matter how much he longed for him, no matter how much he needed to hear his voice again, no matter what questions he had for Paul, he was outside of his, of his reach. And I don't know if you've ever been there where there's somebody that has become outside of your reach and you can feel alone. You can feel abandoned. You can feel uncovered. You can feel lost. You can feel like, like, like what is going on here? Where am I to go? What am I to do? Like the disciples when Jesus ascended into heaven and they're standing there gazing. There's somebody that has to tell you it's time to move on. But how do I move on? Because he's all that I know. How, how do I move on? Because he's poured his life into me. I never even imagined that he would ever walk away from me. I never imagined that he would be out of my grasp. I've always had him close to me. I, 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 mean, I mean, he really, really started my rebirth, my regeneration in Christ. I would have known Christ if it wasn't for Paul. I saw the way that Paul worshiped. I saw the way that Paul preached. I saw the way that he taught. I saw the way that he laid hands on people. I saw as he did the Lord's Supper. I saw him pray for the sick and they recover. I saw him tend to the sick. I saw him help people. I saw him uh, 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 baptize babies. I saw him. But now what am I to do? Because he's out of my reach. out of my reach the truth of the matter is I want to help somebody with something that I have discovered through this process in my life is that although someone may be outside of your reach he was in need of Paul's presence he wanted to be near Paul. He wanted to be close to him. I want to help you with something. That the source never changes. But the form of the resource will. I said the source will never change. But the resource, the form of the resource will change. Let me help you what I mean. He wanted Paul's physical presence. But in the midst of where he was, he had to realize that outside of the presence, Paul had already packed inside of him the principles. Okay. That even though he wanted to touch his physical body that that Paul the resource had changed and transformed into the principles the wisdom yes, that was inside yes, of him okay let me explain it like this Jesus says to his disciples in John chapter 14 he says I am leaving you but I'm going to what? Send you a comforter. I'm going to send you the spirit of truth that will do what? That will teach you things. What? I need some Bible readers in here. That will also bring to remembrance everything, not just some things, but everything that I taught you. Even the stuff that you got wrong, I taught you and it's still inside of you. Somebody shout, it's in you. Somebody shout, it's in you. But I'm alone. There's things that Timothy is about to face that he's never faced before. He always had Paul that he could call or be near. But y'all know there ain't no Zoom back there. Ain't no FaceTime. Ain't no Google Chat. Facebook Messenger. 
He can't post on Paul's Facebook page and say, hey, hey, doc. I know you busy building churches, but can you holler at your son? There's no social media. There's no meeting time. There's no secretary. There's no assistant to say, can you set up a meeting with Paul? The greatest, one of the greatest resources that Timothy had at that time, not having social media, not having a phone, not having text message, not having these all modern convenience, what is the one thing that connects Paul to Timothy? It's papyrus. Somebody say papyrus. What is papyrus? It's a letter. And he opens the letter. Y'all thought he opened the book. Y'all thought he opened the Bible. No, he sent him an actual letter. He sends, the courier comes and says, hey, there is a papyrus here for you. And it's from Paul. <laughs> okay. All right, I thank God whom I'm served with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, <laughs> as without ce ceasing. And I, I remember you in my prayers, oh God, <laughs> night and day, he's here from his father again he's hearing from his mentor again he's hearing from from the guy that he's been longing to see but he okay all right all right okay all right Paul wrote me a letter past <laughs> greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy in other words Paul understood that the church of Ephesus was going to be a hard and difficult work. And that Timothy would have to bear the weight of building it to the point that it would bring him to tears. So that Paul could continue to fulfill his missionary journey that would bring him joy. Because to do the work of the Lord brought him joy. <laughs> All right. So when I call to remembrance, when I'm reminded... I'm reminded of the genuine faith that is in you. I want to pause right here and give you one takeaway for those who are taking notes. In this season, I want you to give your faith your full attention. Shatala bohosha. I didn't say give church your full attention. I said give your faith your full attention. Stop making excuses of why you can't read your Bible. Stop making excuses of why you don't have time to pray. Stop making excuses because the moment, okay, all right, the moment something bad happens into your life, then you, then, then you pray, you pray, you'll find time to pray. Let things change on you. You'll find time to pray. Let you get COVID-19. You'll find time to pray. You'll find time to email. You'll find time to get a therapist. You'll find time when things go This time, I want you to take the responsibility for what God gave you. Stop taking your faith for granted. Stop taking these sermons for granted. They are a life source to some people. Your family. 
I want you to take your faith and I'm, I'm not promoting some type of some type of uh, weird mode of Christianity. I'm I'm not talking. Uh, 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 I, I, I hope you hear my heart. I am just saying, uh, stop making excuses and say this is not my personality. I don't do that. I don't know. I'm not trying to get you into a form of godliness. I am trying to get you to understand that the greatest relationship that you can ever build is your relationship with God. No matter what happens, He is the anchor. He is the fortress. He is the buckler. He is the shield. He is the Palm and Gilead and let me tell you he is the life source he is Christ he is Christos he is the anointed one he is the source he is the everything he is the one that has conquered hell and the grave oh God he's the one that conquered hell and the grave I'm talking about getting on your face. I am talking about getting on your face. Whether your husband knows anything about you getting on your face and before God, whether your spouse knows it, but you need to pray. You need to spend time. You need to carve out some time to pray together. You need to carve out some time to show your kids. You need time to give your faith your full attention. You've given your business your full attention. You've given your finances your full attention. You've given your career its full attention. When are you going? to give your faith your full attention when you're gonna you're packed with so much potential you're packed with so much power when are you gonna give your faith your full attention a devotional something to center your life something to anchor your life something to bring your mind under the submission and the power and the authority listen y'all I'm, I'm telling you I don't just read the scriptures I believe the scriptures and if the word says that I will keep your mind in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him then guess what I may not know how but God show me how to keep my mind stayed on you when distractions come show me give me peace give me strength give me power that I didn't know I had I don't know how to be a father, but show me. Oh, David says, David says, as great of a water as he was, he still prayed and said, Lord, teach my hands how to war. I don't know how to do it, but God, there is a place in God. There is a place in God. There is a place in God. There is a place in God that every practical thing you want to do, every, every presentation, I mean, I'm talking about the most simplest presentation in front of other people and you don't don't believe that you can speak in front of other people there is a place in God that he will show you that you are capable that you are able so, be seated back to my letter When I call to remember, it's your genuine faith. There's a purity about his faith. He never tried to jockey for position. He never tried to jump over people. He never tried to scandalize. He knew that there was something pure about Timothy's faith. Is there something pure about your faith? Is there something pure about your life? Is there something, if there's not, you need to say, Lord, whatever is not like you, take it out of me. Whatever is not like God, I lay it on the altar. Whatever is not genuine in me, I want to be a genuine person. I want to be a person that people can trust. I want to be a person that people feel safe. Because what I believe now is that God is repositioning people not because of how great their gift is, but by how genuine their faith is. I'll never forget, I gotta deviate. I'll never forget, Pastor called me in the office one day. She calls you in the office. She's going to ask you to do something or she's going to rebuke you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she may not even remember this. She said, she said to me, she says, 
Travis, there are some things that I, I may not be able to show you. There are some things that I, that, that, that I know that's not my assignment or whatever to, to show you. I may not be able to show you how to do this, this, and this. She said, but you know what I can show you? It's how to love people. You remember that? She brought it on me. She said, I can show you how to love people. And that stuck with me. Even though I kind of thought like, I, I feel like I kind of love people. <laughs> but I rehearsed and meditated to what she said to me turned into a prayer. To say, Lord, teach me how to love your people. Teach me so that people can feel your love through me, your compassion, your correction, your reproof, your love, your passion. Teach me, God, how to love your people. And so, 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 he says, Do you faith that is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother? Lois, your mother, Eunice, there's a generational thing. You may be a Lois. It, it starts with you. It started with you. Whatever you do is what you will pass down to your generations to come. Lois, 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 his grandmother, she had a genuine faith. Lois was a prayer warrior. Lois was the one that was seat that everybody knew that they could come to and they would pray for. They knew that they could come to Lois because she had a genuine faith. Not only did Timothy had a, that had a great faith, but guess what? Everybody's life around Lois was impacted because because of her faith in Jesus Christ people were saved people were healed people were set free by our grandmother's face do I have any grandmothers in here that says guess what I don't care what comes I don't care what happens with my grandkids they can know I don't care I'm gonna pray for them I'm going to cover them I'm gonna give my I'm gonna give my all whatever I have to go without I'm gonna give it because I want them to have something I want to pass more down than just money I want to pass down more than just property I want to pass down a spiritual inheritance. I want to pass them something that money cannot buy. I want to pass them something that the generations to come will marvel because of the power and the favor of God. Because you can have property, you can have money, you can have stuff, but when all those things shift and change, you have to have an anchor, and that anchor is your faith in God. It's your anchor Fred, it's your anchor, 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 it's your anchor when the ship is tossed and turned, when the moments in the boat is twisted upside and down, when it doesn't feel like when you're coming or whether you're going, it is your anchor. Chris, it's your anchor. She anchored you. <laughs> Lois and Eunice, be seated. I got to finish my letter. Y'all keep interrupting my letter. He says, it first dwelt in her, Lois. And then she passed it down to your mama. We got to stop passing down generational curses and start passing down generational blessings. He says, and I am persuaded, I am convinced, I am assured 100%, 120%, I will bet my life <laughs> that it, what was in them, oh, it's in you. What they had, what they possessed, it may look different, oh, but it's in you. Woo, woo. You may speak a different language. 
You may be in different places. You may do different things. You may move in different industries. You may not be inside of the church working in church. Oh, but it's in you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What was in her? Oh, it's in you. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Just like I can see her eyes in your eyes. Just how I can see her lips in your lips. Just like I can see uh, her hips in your hips. Guess what? Oh, it's in you. Oh, it's in you. It's right in your bloodline. It's right in the DA. What are you going to pass down? Because it's in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. Jaden is in you. AJ is in you. Manny is in you. Therefore, whew, here's the good stuff. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying of our hands. Wait, wait, wait a second. Paul didn't say, I'm coming to help you. Paul never said, I am coming to get you out. I heard about what is happening, what's happening in Ephesus. I heard what is happening. I, that you, you sent a letter and it was a 911. Uh, 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 but, but, but whenever sent a Paul, whenever Paul sends a letter to anyone, it means he has the answer in the letter. The answer is in the letter. So, his, so, so whatever he's answering uh, 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 Timothy's question of will you come to me? Will you, will you help me? Listen, I've reached a hard place. I've reached reached a point in my life where I'm overwhelmed. I've reached a point of disappointment. I've reached a point of frustration trying to build this church in Ephesus and this culture that is surrounding me. The leaders that are within here. All the things that I am facing in here. Paul's answer is, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you do the laying of our hands. Let me pause right here and suggest, I'm going to teach you something. That when Paul is saying, I remind you to stir up the gift, in another translation, it says fan into flame. Which means that there are coals, like coals on, uh, uh, coals on an altar or coals like in a grill. That once the temperature begins to, 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 to go down, it's because the coals, right, the coals are getting cooler. But if you blow on the coals... The fire and the temperature would be ignited. All right, all right. I'm going to teach you something here. So what Paul is teaching Timothy right here is that the way to stir, stir up, the way to stir up the gift is that you got to blow on the gift. Well, you said, well, how do I, it's in me. How do I blow on the gift? What he is trying to say through the Jewish metaphorical, Greek metaphorical picture, he is telling Timothy that the only way to stir up the gift is to get back to prayer. Okay. All your depression, your disappointment, your grief, your hurt, your problems, your situation, your marriage, all of this stuff. Watch this. That is keeping you blinded from what's really beneath the surface. Because sometimes we can get so distracted with the problem that we forget where the answer is. Why, oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let, me, let me say this. Bishop, you're like this. So he says... That was, which was given to you, watch, which is in you through the laying of our hands. So there became a moment where Paul laid hands on Timothy. Watch this. He didn't just ignite a gift. He deposited something in him. I want to tell you what that deposit is. You feel like you're incapable of moving into the assignment. You may have the skill. You may have had the relationships. But if you will be honest, some of you wrestle with the fear of getting it wrong. You wrestle with the fear of it failing. You wrestle with the fear. So the presbyter, which before Paul leaves him, 
he lays hands on him to impart into him the gift. What is the gift? The gift is the capacity to walk in what you didn't think you could walk in. Okay, okay, watch this. Can I tell you what that is, Chris? It's called grace. It was the grace for the assignment that made up the gap. Because when you don't feel like you are enough, but there is an assignment before you, there is a gap between. And you say, God, how? I can't fill this gap. But God says, there's something that I imparted into you that will help you fill the gap. So no longer would you say, stop saying you are incapable. Stop trusting everything in these personalities and ideograms. There is a part in the Holy Ghost. There is an anchor in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the real power and the flame and the power of the real Spirit of God. Because if you're ever going to do anything for God, even when you feel like you have, whew, you know what he tells Joshua? He says, as I was with Moses, just as like I was with Moses, I will what? Be with you. What does he tell Joshua? He says, Here's the secret ingredient. Be courageous. When I tell you to step in the water, just step in the water. I'll handle the water if you would just step in it. All right, that's a deviation from it. If, if you would just walk in what I said, I'll handle the parting. If you would just assemble the people, I will handle the miracle. If you would just assemble the people, I'll provide for you. If you would just have enough courage to believe in what I put in you and what I said in you and just do what I said, it will happen like I said. He says, be of good courageous. Be, uh, he said, be of good courage. Watch this. And he said, meditate on my word day and night. Some of you to meditate. I don't know how to meditate. How am I? I don't know how to meditate. That's for them yoga people. Stretch out. No, no, no. Can I tell you that some of y'all are already masters in meditation? You want me to tell you how you're a master? Because all of that stuff about how you're not enough that you keep rehearsing in your head day and night what happened to you you are a master in meditation it's just on replay it's on repeat all in your mind years and years of dis disappointment and hurt it's just replaying can I tell you that you're going to have to exchange those thoughts of not enough and replace with them I am I am all things through Christ who strengthens me no 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 I'm rerouting every thought in my mind I'm going to meditate on his word day and night no 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 I am strong I am courageous I shall not fear no no you will have to speak it out of your mouth until you teach your body, until you teach your mind. This is what we think. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are pure, whatever things are so of good report, think on these things. What are you thinking? What are you thinking determines where you're going. So stir up the gift. And sometimes you got to sit still long enough. Sometimes you got to settle yourself long enough to get dominion over your thought life. Shatala Bahosa. Oh, my axe is sharpened in this place. You got to, 
You got to steal yourself and you got to let every Roman thought that is around you, every thought, everything that you're thinking, everything that is contrary to the will of God, you're going to have to be still. Maybe this is a season for you to just be still, be still, because guess what? All of, if you be still uh, long enough, all this stuff starts crowding around. All this stuff just starts filling up. All of this stuff around you, but as you pray, as you pray, as you go deeper, as you stir up the gift of God and say, Father, I thank you for what you have given me. I feel inadequate, but your word declares that all things are possible. God, I don't know what the future may hold, but I know you hold the future. I know that there's sickness and I know there's defeat and you know that I feel disappointed and you know that I'm overwhelmed with grief but Father I'm going to dig I'm going to get beneath the pain I'm going to go beneath the pain there's something beneath your pain there's something beneath your grief there's something beneath your regret there's something beneath the fight that you're in there's something beneath it there's something beneath and you got to dig for it you got to stir it up it may not happen the first day but you got to come back and say guess what I didn't hear him today but I'm coming back. Father, I didn't hear you yesterday, but you are able. You are capable. Everything is possible. I love you with all my heart. I love you with all my heart. God, can I tell you that sometimes God is silent because he wants you to recognize yourself and clean out of yourself. That's why the first mode of prayer is repentance. So for you, some of you, this season is a season of... Father, I, forgive me for not trusting you like I said. I, you know, I posted things on Facebook and I posted things in my story to tell people to be strong, but I am weak myself. But Father, I repent. I turn away from every evil thing. God, I'm getting beneath my sin because you put something in me and I'm stirring it up. I'm stirring it up. I'm stirring it up. I'm stirring it up. Thank you, God, for what you placed in me. Thank you for my family. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Whether you speak to me or not, it's okay. But just empower me as I work. Empower me as I show houses. Empower me as I do what you call me to do. Empower me, God. Stir it up. Whatever's in me, Father. Light a fire to it. Blow on every gift. Blow on my mind. Change my mind. I don't want to think the same way. God, we're moving forward. I can't take, I can't take this Egyptian mindset into the promised land. God, change my mind. Change my appetite. Change my demeanor. Change, change it. Whatever's in here, change it. Get this stuff out of me. Depression, you can't stay. Depression, you can't stay. Depression, you can't stay. Because God, fear, you cannot stay. Because God has not given me the spirit of fear. Because Timothy was under fear of being attacked and being brutalized by the people in the city. But God has not given me the spirit of fear. He hasn't given me the spirit of fear. I'm going to dig some more. And as I dig, there's more in here. There's not fear. I got fear out. But guess what? When I, when I, when I look around, when I look in here, I realize that, that, that I know theologian says that fear and faith cannot co coincide or coexist with each other. But can I tell you that, 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 that when, when Timothy got rid of that fear, when he was reminded of the fear, he was able to dig and stir up the gift and find faith. Father, I thank you for the faith. Wow, can I tell you that faith is the word in the Greek called pistos, which has two dimensions of it. Pistos means knowledge of and action. Knowledge of and action. So when God comes to Abram and says, go to a land and a country that I'm going to show you, he received the knowledge which was knowing, but he had to act on what he knew. Some of you are caught between knowing and acting. And God says, I can't really tell if you really have faith unless you take what I gave you and put it in the action. Faith is not just what he said. Faith is what you do with what he said. 
Somebody shout faith. So he digs some more. He digs some more. And he says, you know what? I got power. Woo, I got power. I got, you know what? Beneath all of this, I felt powerless, but I got power. You know what power is? The connective, the connective power or, or the neurological power that allows somebody to stand when everything's around you that says be seated. It's not just healing. It's not just laying hands. But guess what? You have the power to stand when everything is, is around you to say don't stand, be seated. No, 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 no. When people try to intimidate you and you still go ahead and do it anyway, when everybody don't think you're capable of doing it and you stand anyway, that's God's power rising up in you. I said that's power rising up in you. I said there's power. You know what another dimension of power is? It's creativity. So guess what? Some of you may never preach on a platform, but you operate in a certain dimension of power. Power to execute. Power to strategize. Power to give people information. Power to build relationships. There's so many dimensions. Power to capture images and to write people's histories and their stories. You have a power to see. You have a power to heal. You have a power to love. Somebody shout, I got power. I got power over the enemy because the enemy will tell you you're not capable of doing it. The enemy will tell you that guess what? It will never happen for you. But even when he says that and even when you say it to yourself you have to say, I have power. Why? Because God has not given me the spirit of fear. I am not talking about I'm not giving you some self-help message. I'm giving you the word of God. He says you got power. You got power. Go to your therapist. Go on vacation. Do whatever you got to do. But you better remember you got power. You have power to create. You have power to do. You have power to innovate. You have the power to help. You have the power to mentor. You have the power to lead. Whatever you think that you're powerless to do, you have to say, Lord, you've given me the power. I know there's a deadline, but God, you've given me the power. I know we're behind time, but God, you've given me the power. You're going to give me the strength. You're going to give me the ingenuity. Guess what? You're going to expand my metron. You're going to expand my measure. You're going to expand my metron. So even what I thought I couldn't do, I'll be able to walk in. All these thoughts, all these images. Father left your mama. So now you don't even know in your adult life how to trust a man. All this. You don't know. You don't know how to build. You just, all these thoughts just whirling in your head. Just, and it's filling up so much space. All this negativity is filling up so much space. But, but he says, you know what? I've also given you not only power, but I've given you a sound mind. I've given you the capacity to think clearly, to have a clear conscience to be able to navigate through things that you thought you were impossible to do with your, your mind. Why? Because I packed you full of wisdom. I gave you the revelation I operated in. I deposited that and more in you. I, I Watch this. If God ever deposits a seed in you, he not only deposits what's in that tree, but he deposits through the seed more trees that is in the seed. So, so Timothy had the capacity to do more than Paul would have ever done. Why? Because of the seed that he planted to in him. This is a season for focus for some of you. You've given me a sound mind. Not to race and follow everything, but you've given me soundness. Quiet in every contrary voice that is, it exalts itself against the will of God. You've given me a sound mind. You've given me a clear mind so that I can focus on what I need to focus on. You've given me the capability to compartmentalize things that, watch this, guess, guess what? To stop worrying about the things that I cannot change and focus on the things that I've been assigned to change. So here's what I want you to know. I want you to remember 
what's in you. I want you to remember that the enemy cannot control your memory. He can't steal your memory. I want you to remember who you are. Because stuff in you can cause you to forget who you really are. You can be hit by so much in life that you even forget who you are. You forget what you're capable of doing. You forget what you have on your resume that you said that you were capable of. It, 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 it'll, life will knock you so hard you'll forget the greatness that God put inside of you. Remember help you rebuild your life. It'll help you re rebuild your credit. It'll help you rebuild your life and your heart and your capacity and your capability. And when you remember what God has done, you get access to what God can do. I'll read them again. The enemy can't steal your memory. Give your faith your full attention. Remember what is inside of you. It's in you, it's in you, it's in you, it's in you, it's in you. It's already in you. You don't have to take a class to get it. It's already in you. One of the most frustrating things of going back to school in a certain area for me is because all the stuff I'm learning now, I learned 10 years ago. But in order to get this certification, I got to go back and refresh, 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 refresh. Re There's a re. I got to refresh all of this stuff that I thought I knew already. And I'm finding out things that there are things in there that I didn't see before. But I see it now. But that's not it. So, oh, that's Paul's letter. Whatever's been imparted in you, keep it close. Watch this. But there's another letter. He says, Timothy, my son, and this is where I'm going to end. And this is where we're going to pray. And, and I'm going to pray for you. And, and we're going to get out of here because you're like, well, what is this message? This message is about moving forward. I'm telling you, your strength is not in what is ahead. Your strength is in your capability to remember. Watch this. Even the remembering the things that you don't want to remember teaches you something about that memory that maybe you shouldn't become what happened to you. Or learn what not to do by what happened around you. He says, Timothy, my son, here's my instructions for you. Based on, this is based on, this is fact, based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight the Lord's battles and cling to your faith and keep your conscience clear. For people have deliberately violated their conscience. As a result, their faith has become shipwrecked. I come against every ounce of faith shipwrecked. As a matter of fact, there's some of you that have shipwrecked in this building. But guess what? We're sending the lifeguards. We're sending the lifeguards. We're sending, we're sending the boats out there to get you. We're sending the boats out to get you. We're sending the National Guard out there to rescue you. I know you may feel like you're shipwrecked, but guess what, baby? Uh, we're sending help. Somebody say, God's sending you help. God's sending you help. But here's what he says. He says, based on the prophetic words that you have been given, it is not going to be an easy road because when you get a prophetic word, you can expect some opposition. But the prophetic word that I release to you 
is not the only thing that was released to you. I'm giving you the power. I'm giving you the punch. I am giving you the fight. I am giving you what it takes to fight the good fight of faith. Now there's a prophetic word over my life. So why would you make me fight when you've already spoken something in my existence? God is a co-laborer with you. There are things that he's going to bring you into, but it is going to be through you that you strategize, that you fight, that you build, that you do, that you protect, that you do whatever it takes. But I came to tell somebody, you are getting your fight back. I'm going to here to tell you, you're going to get your fight back. You're going to get your fight back. You're going to get your fervor back. You're going to get your fight back. Now, I'm not talking to anybody in here. You're going to get your fight back. You're going to get your fight back. I'm getting my fight back. In 2022, I am getting my fight back. I'm going to fight. Whether I got to go to chemo, whether I got to go to treatments, I am going to fight. No matter what I got to do, the way that I fight through grief is by enrolling in K's way. The way that I fight through things is by gaining the knowledge that I need to, to be able to navigate through it. I am going to fight. I am not going to lay down and die. I am going to fight. Who am I talking to in this building? That says I don't care what it is I don't care if it's my own addiction I don't care if it's my own pride I don't care whatever it is I am going to fight I'm going to fight because if God is before me who can it be against me but why I'm gonna fight because I remember I remember what he did for me I remember where I was I remember what happened I remember how discouraged I was but I remember how you brought me out before I need somebody all over this building to lift your hands and say, Lord, I remember. Lord, I remember every way that you made, every door that you opened, every song that you wrote, every place that you took me. I remember. I remember not having enough money to pay that bill. I remember the lights being off, but God, I remember. I remember praying for one car, but you blessed me with a garage full of cars. But I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not my benefits, and forget not my benefits, y'all come on, I said forget not my benefits, I will remember, I will remember, I need you to tell your soul, I will remember, I will remember the one part, the one room apartment that we were in, and the kids had to sleep on the floor, I remember not having enough to eat. I remember eating spam and oodles and noodles. Oh baby, I remember. I remember not even knowing what a bank account was. I didn't even know how to write a check. But God, I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember my first flight. I remember. I remember my first hotel stay. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. And God, you don't have to give me a star to remember. I will stand and declare that I will remember. Whether you change the situation, change my life, I will remember. I will remember. I need you to grab your spouse's hand. I need you to grab the person's hand beside you and say, Lord, I will remember everything you've done for me. I declare. Come on, worship for a second. I need you to worship. Some of you need to hit this altar and repent and say, Lord, I open my heart to you. Now, God, I open my heart. I open my mind. God, the pandemic tried to get me to forget. But Lord, I will remember. I will remember the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, somebody hit the altar. Somebody bow where you are and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for ever doubting what you could do. Forgive me for ever thinking that I was not capable, that I was incapable of being loved of being light, but Lord, I will remember. Oh Lord, I will remember. Lord, I will remember. I remember the job you gave me. I remember the family you gave me. I remember the husband you gave me. I remember the wife you gave me. I remember the kids that they said I couldn't have children, but Lord, I will remember. I remember being on EBT. I remember having food stamps, eating government cheese, but Lord, I will remember. I will thank you. I will praise you. I remember being addicted to drugs. I remember being strung out, but Lord, I will remember. I, being, I remember being so low. I remember being so 
one that told me that I was more than what I had been through. You sent somebody to show me that I was capable. You sent somebody to say, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Your latter house is going to be greater than the former. I speak truth. I speak life. I speak wholeness. I need somebody to get out of yourself. I need somebody to get vulnerable with God and say, Lord, I remember. I remember when my father died and I didn't feel like I could go on. But Lord, you sent something inside of me. Why? Because there was something that he deposited in me. And daddy, I'm going to make you proud. I hope you're in heaven looking over the banister and cheering me on. But guess what? We're going to do things that we've never done before. Things that you thought were not capable. Things outside. I pray that you're pulling strings for me. That you're pulling strings for Sydney. That you're pulling strings for Pastor. That you're pulling strings for Bishop. That you're pulling things for this church. That you're pulling strings for Mom. That you're pulling things for Lauren. That you're pulling things down for Neil. I declare, I declare, you're doing it for Nina. You're doing it for Sydney. You're doing it for Isaiah. You're doing it for Mason. You're doing it for Mariah. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're out of my reach, but you hit me. You're out of my reach, but you hit me. You're out of my reach, but you. Father, today we have gathered what began as just a thought to say we need to begin this new year with a series. But I thank you because you have already, you already divinely had already orchestrated that whatever was to be shared it will be it will begin with what we remember every time that Israel got off every time they got big and bad and thought that they could do it on their own God always sent a prophet to say remember the God that I found you in your blood and I rescued you, I pulled you out, I cleaned you up. Remember the God that brought you out of Egypt into a land flowing with milk and honey. I need you to remember. When you don't remember, you'll walk away from your family. When you don't remember, you'll walk away from purpose. When you won't remember, you will let pride guide you versus your purpose guide you. Somebody under the sound of my voice, close your eyes as I pray for you right now. Father, I thank you because us as a collective body and a church, online as well as in the building, you do not have to worry about the Potter's House North because we remember. <laughs> we remember not having your presence and you poured out your presence. Woo! We remember the moments we came in this building not knowing whether we were coming or going, but your presence had a way that when I didn't want to lift my hands, tears flowed down my eyes and my hands was lifted. And when I wanted to say, Lord, I hate you, all I could say was, Lord, I love you. But we repent, God, in our hearts and our minds as a collective body from the, from the leaders of this church on down from the bishop and the pastor on down to every person under the sound of our voice and our children, we repent. Because we didn't remember. But today, you sent me in an assignment in this house to get your people ready for what is ahead. And I thank you right now because to remember it is the anchor of your soul. It is the strength and the power you reside in. It is your presence. You've taken us places, God, but it has nothing to compare to where you're taking us to. 
So I thank you right now, God. Because what we remember and what you did yesterday is going to help us move into the future. We give you praise because to remember is a discipline of our soul. It's a discipline of our mind. We will remember.